Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. In the last part we got here to the Sword and Shield maze and now we're actually gonna finish this place off. Though, mind you, a majority of this place is actually in this video because this is actually a really long dungeon. Not the longest dungeon in Zelda history. For me, that probably goes to... Ah, uh, what was the name of the Sky Dungeon in Twilight Princess? That place took me a while my first playthrough. Anyway, up here we got the compass, which is, I think, one of the rare instances we get that first before the map. And we got about nine chests left, so we got our work cut out for us, that's for sure. And the return of the spinning platform of doom, so there's three of them in this game. As opposed to, like, what, the nine or ten that were in seasons? Uh, ages? Eh. Thank God they went easy with them on us. <laughs> okay, now this room's kind of weird. Don't kill anything for like 10 seconds. Because it's the only way this Armo statue will start moving. Uh, there's an owl, I believe, in the top right of this room that will tell you, or at least allude to that. Anyway, here we get the dungeon map, which uh, shows us, no, surprise, surprise, this place is shaped like a sword and shield. I almost forgot to do this, but you need to bring that uh, magnetic ball on the top of the screen over to that switch in order to do stuff. And now we're done on this floor for now. We'll be back there momentarily. It's weird. I thought uh, either the ancient ruins or this would actually take around three parts, but no, they both took around two. In fact, I think every dungeon took almost two parts, uh... Snakes remain, and... Gnarled Root aside. Um, Poison Moth Slayer may have only taken one part. I don't really recall it that, po uh, that far back, actually. Even though those were only recorded this past week, you'd think I would remember that. Oh, well. Anyway, we want to murder these Armos Knights, because it's the way we get to the Hyper Slingshot. The last dungeon item, and it's kind of a lame upgrade, actually. All it does is multiply the amount of seeds you shoot out by three. However, one nice little thing is that it doesn't cost three to use. It still costs one. Where did the other two come from? I'm just going to assume Hammer Space. I do kind of wish you could carry over the unique items from one game to another in a password game. Mind you, they wouldn't be used that much, but having a near-full inventory would be nice. <laughs> Or at least get me the switch hook, because I really like using that thing as a weapon in certain uh, places. Either way, we want to use the rotation platform in order to get this key. Because uh, small keys are the most valuable thing in the world, obviously. And for some reason, the villains seem to have a monopoly on the damn things, because they only they have them. Aside from Rosa. <laughs> Maybe that's why she's so popular down in Sabrosia. Anyway, let's use that hyper slingshot in order to hit these three things. And that makes a stairwell appear that we need to go up. Now, this is a pretty long room. You have to bomb your way through all these rocks to get to a treasure chest on the left side. So, what I'm actually going to do is cut to the point where I've gotten to the chest because it took me like a minute. And that's a minute I don't want you guys to watch. <laughs> and plus, it's all it is, it's a small key. Must have inventory in perfect order! I do actually have to question why they gave us so many spare inventory slots. Because... Even in a... Password game where you get all the items, there's two spaces left over still. Maybe there's a couple dumbing out items or something? Eh, either way. Time for the mini-boss. Fry Polar. Bad pun is bad. There's two ways you can damage this guy. Well, first off, you use Mystery Seeds against him to send him into his ice form or fire form, depending on what you hit him as. And then when he's in his ice form, you can hit him with the Ember Seeds to damage him slightly. However, the big way to damage him is to Mystery Seed the ice that he sends out in his ice form, and throw it at his fire form once you hit him with ice, uh, Mystery Seeds again. The reason I did a fade transition there was because I didn't hit him for like a half minute. <laughs> I actually really like this concept for a boss. It took me a while, and I actually had to use my magic potion in the process because I ran so low on health. 
because I was not wearing the freaking blue ring throughout this entire dungeon. Until the, uh, boss, actually. Anyway, heading back to the entrance of the dungeon, because earlier on I made note of these three statues. By the way, I'm approaching from a staircase on the right of the second room. But now we can hit these three now that we have the slingshot, and we get a chest to appear. And what is in it? But what is within every optional chest that is not a heart piece? A ring! I'll get that approved, uh, approved? Appraised next part. And this room. This room is fairly similar to uh, certain things we've done otherwise in the games. There's torches in here we need to light with our slingshot. However, they go out really quickly, so you're going to need to use the Pegasus Seeds in order to light all seven. Three on the left, three on the right, and the one in the middle. And then we get the staircase to appear. And we're coming up on what a puzzle that gives me a lot of bad Twilight Princess flashbacks. Ice block pushing. No! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's not that bad. And it's weird because they imply, or not imply, they use an element similar to the thing from, uh, what's it called? Twilight Princess. Where you need to put one block up, uh, on another one before pushing it away. Uh, I hated that ice block pushing puzzle in Twilight Princess, though. Mostly because I was too dumb to figure out the solution. But for doing that, we get a 2D area, which I am not a big fan of. The first half's not so bad, especially if you have the s snowshoe ring from the Password game. But this room is still terrible no matter what, because the conveyor belts throw me off so much. That took about two minutes. And we got the Return of the Thwomps for the final time. Actually, are they on Link's Awakening? I don't think they are. I know Goombas and Piranhas are, but it's been a while since I played that. Uh, that's one thing I can't wait for when I eventually get to Link's Awakening, though. No more random heart pieces. In fact, this might be the only Zelda game where heart pieces can be random. I'm, I don't remember Twilight Princess... Uh, Twilight Princess. Uh, Skyward Sword having any like that. I... I don't count the DS games anymore. Uh, meaning Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass, although I really do still kind of like those. But you don't even get heart pieces in that. You get heart containers, so yeah. Uh, I guess we shall see. Anyway, fairly obvious what we have to do here, because we already did the, uh, Hero's Cave. Use your magical boomerang to hit that. Okay, this room can be kind of tricky if you're not paying attention. Uh, this is one of those buttons that raises if you get off of it, so you're gonna need to push one of the two middle bases onto it. Also, we get Paul's voices. You can probably tell what we're gonna do with those. Uh, oh, God! Seriously, how does he just respawn? Logically speaking, how does that work? Mind you, why am I bringing logic into a Zelda game? It's probably the last time we're ever going to get to hear that, actually. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh, well. I should really call Dimitri one more time before we end this game off, because I do kind of miss him. It's really sad, too, because, well, first off, kill this guy as soon as you can. I forget why you come down here, but you do. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, but that's right, Dimitri. It's kind of sad that you get him so early on, you use him so much more in seasons, especially, than you do ages. But past dungeon... Uh, I want to say four? You never use him again. Which, mind you, you can say that for any of the animal buddies, but it's kind of glaring, honestly. Also, boss key, really early on, admittedly. Because as you notice, we're only about the halfway point of the video. <laughs> oh boy. Also, I just... This music reminds me a lot of For Frog the Bell Tolls, actually. Uh, I, uh, you know what? Actually, I was about to mention something, but I'll mention this first. You want to bomb up here because you won't gonna get a small key for doing this. The way this puzzle works is that there's an Armos ghost who you can hopefully see over the compression. And he follows a random path for every save file. You need to match that perfectly. He, it's the same for every save... Well, not the same for every save file, but... For every individual save file, it is its own set path. So, yeah. And for doing that, you get a key. Now, the, the way this section works is that there are four red pits in some of the rooms surrounding us. And we need to carry an ice crystal like this into them and throw it into it. One like that one right there, actually. 
And doing so will solidify some lava beneath us, which we need to do in order to progress. Like so. It makes a really annoying sound effect, actually. Anyway, as I was going to say before I got interrupted by both Armos Ghost and Icebox, or Ice Crystal, I was really surprised when I saw the Prince of Sable from For Frog the Bell Tolls in Smash 4, actually. Uh, you might recall I actually did a Let's Play that game a while back, uh, hashtag shameless plug. But, uh, he's actually one of the better assist trophies if he gets one of your enemies in a corner. Oh, boy. Also, is it sad I still haven't played the Wii U version? <laughs> Mostly because on that day, it was between Pokemon or that, and I chose Pokemon because I would get more playtime out of that in a week. Speaking of which, I actually started completing the Pokedex in that. I think I'm at... 166, no, 68 caught out of 211, 197 seen. A lot of which are trade evolutions or starters. Anyway, I cut back to this, uh, that fade transition was because I went back and got another one of the ice crystals after hitting that switch because that's how we get one into here. You know, that sound effect for the lava is annoying, but at the same time, it's immensely satisfying for some reason. Hmm. Or maybe because it's lava, it's satisfying. <laughs> Didn't I make that same pun with a Molotov cocktail back in Max Payne? Yes, I did. Oh, Lord, I'm reusing my puns. That's never good. I guess you could say it's quite punishing. <laughs> ah, enough about my bad puns now. Let's continue on. Uh, you're gonna want to climb up that staircase there because you, it leads you down to this floor, or room, rather, where there is a chest for us that you may have noticed when you were here the first time. And what's in it but the last small key in the Oracle games, I, if I recall. It should be. Anyway, I cut back to this room because it, well, saves some time. Because, uh, there were 5 minutes, 45 seconds edited out of this because of backtracking and, uh, yeah, backtracking. And the fry polar boss. Uh... Anyway, now, since we did that, we can now head up into this room and take this up to here. I really should have opened that locked door now to save myself some trouble later, but, oh well. We're now back over here, so you can probably tell where this is going. Since we're back here, what I'm going to do is take another ice crystal back over to the room with the locked door that you saw earlier, so we can head down into that last pit. Oh boy! Ugh. I do believe the shield can block everything, by the way, once it reaches the mirror shield level. Uh, Iron Shield, I know, can block pellets and f I think ro uh, rocks and I think certain fires? And I think mirror shield just blocks everything, but I forget the exact uh, specifics of it all. Oh well. And that's the last lava shoot. I think you can actually fall down those as a pit, but I'm not entirely sure. Either way, I'm not going to attempt it because there is a staircase right there. That leads us onto the final pathway to the boss. There probably is some sort of speedrun tactic that allows you to skip this entire thing, but I'm not sure of it. Anyway, time for the boss. I'm um, gonna tell you right now, since I'm red ringing and, uh, Bigoron swords, this thing's not gonna get much of a chance, but the boss here is Metalock. Uh, pro tip, you can actually use the Pegasus Seed from the Slingshot in order to stun this thing. It has multiple attacks. It has that little projectile attack there, which stones you, and then it'll circle around you with lasers. Uh, it can teleport around to the top of the screen and then sweep with l other lasers, but honestly, if you Bigoron sword and red ring of death, he's really easy. And that's the last heart container. We are now, uh... Pretty much 100% aside from rings, but as I mentioned, I'm not getting them all. 
And this is essence number eight. We got the changing seasons in essence of nature. Scattered seeds sprout in spring, grow in summer, bear fruit in fall, and sleep in through winter. It is an endless cycle of life, the changing seasons. Getting kind of pretentious there, but I don't care. It's a nice little thing. And that is all eight essences and all eight dungeons. All that's left is Onox himself. Oh, that's right. Onox and Dana are a thing. <laughs> I kind of forgot about that. Link, you already have the eighth essence. The changing seasons have filled me with my former power. I have something to give you now, so come see me. Alright, but with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 19, I'm going to buy a magic potion off screen. We're going to appraise those rings we got, and then we're going to go see what the Maker Tree wants with us. See you guys then.